So here's where we're going to have some fun. Um, first, let's check in with our skull movements, just generally to make sure that we know <laughs> where our head is sitting on our body today. So let's do our 3D neck and skull movement assessment check in. So referencing your nose first, anterior tilt of the skull, nose going down towards your chest. We have this axis of rotation through your ears. So you're not just dumping forwards, you're really turning it like a roll of toilet paper. And then go nose up to the ceiling. We're just taking stock here of how the range feels, what the comfort level is. You're probably not gonna notice much pressure changing in your feet. Hopefully you aren't. We really should be able to move the head quite independently of affecting the rest of the body. Keeping the nose as the axis of rotation now, tilt one ear to one shoulder. We can call these our skull lateral flexions, but we could also call it a hiking and dropping on either side of the skull just to match our language with the pelvis and the heels. Same teeter-tottery action. Left ear hikes, right ear drops. Right ear hikes, left ear drops. And just get a sense of where your head feels like it's at today. And lastly, our rotations. What I'd like you to notice if there's one motion of your neck that stands out to you today as feeling a little bit different than the rest, like maybe it's one that feels restricted for you, maybe rotation to the left, feels a little challenging, everything else was okay, but there's one motion that just feels a little uncomfortable or whatever it is for you. So for me, it's doing my lateral flexion to the right. It just feels like a lot of strain on my neck compared to everything else. Everything else feels pretty good today, which is a win for me. Wow, it's a good day. So now let's find our calcaneus influencing tools, our socks and towels. And we're gonna put them at different positions and see if they help us move better above, just as a little self check-in. So what I'd like you to do is fold it up a few times so that it's definitely enough to like create a ramp or a wedge, <laughs> a wedge shape so that we can impact on your heel. Both heels, I guess, let's use both. So what I'd like you to do, and I'll show you this on the foot model first. Let's say this is your foot. You're going to put the wedge under the back of your heel about this much. And the intention of that is to tip your heel onto the front edge. So we're going to be using this placement of your towel or soccer wedge to anterior tilt your heel like a ramp and it'll just roll down like that, okay? So do that under both heels. Don't put it so high that you're standing 100% on it, but you want it under the back, maybe quarter to third of your heel. Make sure you have the same height on both sides. So it should make you feel like you're now standing a bit more forwards on your feet. Now keep your Keep your um, towels like that and just go through that anterior tilt of your pelvis. Just see how that feels. Is that a bit more free, more movement? Because in theory, this is tipping your heels in the same direction we want your pelvis to go. So this should aid you to have a bit more freedom in your pelvis and thus in your hips as well. Do your posterior tilt and notice if that feels better or worse. It might feel better. It might feel like this is blocking you now. We're just getting some information about what we do with your heel bones, if that frees up or reduces movement above. If you've had some ankle sprains, this stuff might be particularly useful to get your heel bones moving again. Now let's try this with the skull. So just take your nose and go down towards your chest. Does this seem to influence better movement through your neck and skull, more range of motion? And then take your head up. And for me, this feels like both directions. I get a little more freedom. Not massive, because I work on this stuff pretty regularly, but for me, it definitely feels like there's more comfort and ease. 
So what information did that give you about that sagittal plane motion when you put your heels into more of an anterior tilt? Now let's do the same thing in the, uh, the frontal plane. So I'll just give you another quick little demo. So let's say this is your left foot. We're gonna put the wedge on the, uh, let's go on the outside like this. I guess I need a bit better of a angle for you. So this is the pinky toe side. You're just gonna put the wedge on the outside of your heel like that. So you can see how that's gonna be dumping it inwards. Whoops, <laughs> it's gonna be tipping the heel inwards a little bit, having this ramp under the outside of it. So we're gonna be biasing our heel to have more weight on the inside edge, okay? So like this. Do that on both feet. Actually, just start on one foot. Put it under the outside three o'clock of your right heel. And it should feel like you have enough under there that it's tipping you onto the inner side of your heel. And with the towel under that side of your heel, I want you to try your right pelvis hike. And just see if that feels any smoother, easier, more comfortable, more natural. In theory, this should be putting your heel into a better relationship with how we'd like it to move along with your pelvis together as you walk. Do that a couple times, just get some info, change anything or not change anything, better, worse or same. Keep that towel there under your heel when you're ready. We're gonna look at your head, tipping side to side. Does that change anything? Well, for me, it feels like now I can just go for days to the right. <laughs> So if that changed anything for you, make a little note about that. And now let's do the same thing, just putting that on the other side. So on the outside of your left heel, nine o'clock on your left heel and put it under enough that it feels like it's tipping you inwards. So you're standing more on the inside of that heel. Do the same thing. Hike that side of your pelvis by bending your other knee. And this feels a little more range of motion for my pelvis for me. Still feels a little clunky, but it definitely feels more free and more natural. And now try with your head right and left into our lateral flexions. Well, that feels way better for me going in this range of motion. This was the direction that I had the most problems with and it felt the least comfortable. And now that just makes it feel a lot easier. And it blocks me going this way. So remember how our head should be tipping in the same direction relatively to our calcaneus. So if your heel bone on the left is getting tipped to the right, Hiking on the outside edge, dropping on the inside edge, we can call that tipping to the right. Wouldn't it make sense that that would make my head tip to the right a little more easy too? So if you can follow along with the shapes that you're putting your heel bone into, you can see how it might correlate with the ease of getting the shape of your pelvis and your skull also into those same positions. Okay, I think that was probably enough tinkering around with things. Hopefully you got a little bit of data about your body and how influencing stuff above or below rather influences things above. We can also do this from the top down, but that would take another probably hour long session. <laughs> but just so you know, it is possible that if you have feet that don't move well, your heels aren't moving well, using something above, for example, just tipping your head a little bit, might actually encourage more motion in your heels too. And this is true for me. It might be true for you, but that's a whole other day. Maybe we'll do part two to this session. But now let's just move into a little movement exploration. We're going to do four exercises and we're going to be using our towel situation and wedge situation if you have them to help our heels move a little bit more easily with the rest of our bodies.
and I'll be giving you a couple of instructions on how to feel what your pelvis and skull are doing at the same time. So everything is going harmoniously.